Hi, I'm Mike with Snap Junk Removal and as part of my free video series on how to start a junk removal business I'm gonna go into a lot more detail on how to dump all the junk that you're getting out of these people's houses and backyards and garages and uh, how to do it cost effectively and all the different options you have so in general running down a list of you know places you can put this stuff um, you can take the trash to landfills and that's where most of it's going to go. Uh, you can take it to transfer stations which is similar to a landfill and I'll go into more detail about that later. Um, the metal and a lot of other things you can take to the scrap yard uh, where they'll give you cash for your metal recycling. Um, you can donate a lot of the better stuff to uh, Goodwills and whatever other uh, you know, nonprofit organizations that are in your area. I guess I shouldn't have listed Goodwill. Uh, but yeah, you can donate the stuff. Um, other things that aren't quite good enough to donate but are still usable, you can give away on Craigslist and uh, Facebook and maybe some other places. Um, you can resell a lot of the items and you can actually get a lot of money. You'd be surprised about all the different things that people will throw away. And not considering its resale value or they're just too rich to care to be honest they, I mean sometimes sometimes people have more uh, money than they do have time and that's why they call someone like you to haul away their junk and pay you um, certain things you can recycle like cardboards and plastics and uh, also oil and uh, other things you can uh, resell a lot quicker to places that will fix up furniture and also resell old junk and they'll call you a picker and they uh, will resell things like uh, old bottles and gas cans and uh, old signs the kind of stuff you'd see on some of those picker shows but we'll talk about that later but we'll start off with uh, going into more detail about landfills and the different types of landfills and you know how you can research the different landfills that are in your area. Um, so I tend to group landfills into two different sections. Um, one is a construction waste kind of landfill in the Houston and Texas area. We call them type 4 landfills and they have certain restrictions of things they don't allow and they're a little bit more, more strict than the other type of landfill which is just your basically household waste landfill so the type of stuff that uh, your municipal you know dump trucks would take from your weekly trash service and, and go dump so the uh, the construction waste type landfills in my area they charge based on volume and they'll take things like uh, boards uh, concrete bricks sheetrock nails tile um, just basically anything that you might consider construction but they won't take you know things like uh, food trash any putrescible waste basically anything that rots um, they won't take chemicals not only household chemicals but non hazardous I mean hazardous chemicals as well and they also won't take paint they won't take oil and that's kind of like you know that type 4 you got to differentiate from the other type of landfill that will take household trash where you can have household chemicals and food trash and that's the main difference between the two you know one will take food trash and household chemicals and the other won't but it's also important to note that um, not all the type 4 landfills will accept electronics and some do so one of the landfills that I go to a lot in the Houston area it, it ele accepts electronics whereas some of the other type 4 landfills I avoid because that then I have to sort more trash before I go to that particular landfill um, now you might think to yourself well why don't I just always go to the uh, landfill that will accept more stuff you know accept trash I mean uh, food and and chemicals and things like that well depending on where you live in relation to your landfills you know it might make logistical sense for you to take the trash of those landfills but for me for instance uh, it doesn't work out that way the main landfills that will take 
all that kind of trash they're they're kind of far away it doesn't make sense for me to drive like 35 miles to go to the one that will accept food trash and they also charge differently so whenever you're looking up the different landfills you can take all the junk to you need to keep in mind that different landfills have different restrictions and so you know you can go to your county website or your city website and look up landfills you know landfills Houston landfills Harris County and uh, you'll have to call around to these landfills and figure out their different restrictions and how they charge which brings me to my kind of next subject well how do landfills charge and how do you go to the landfill you know where do you pay where do you dump the stuff what do you need to do before you go to the landfill um, the landfills in my area most of them charge by volume and I'll get to another type of landfill that charges by weight here in a minute and it's a, it's a transfer station but we'll talk about landfills for right now so whenever you go to the landfill they're all gonna have a gate where you come and pay and that's the first place you go to um, some of those places it's gonna be like an office or a, a trailer with an office in it and they'll have you pull up to a, a, a little weigh station that'll that will weigh your truck and your trailer so they kind of know what weight you're going in with. Um, other places they don't have the weigh station and they just look at whatever's in your trailer or your truck or whatever vehicle you're using and they'll estimate the volume. Um, but like I said a lot of them just do it by volume in my area so they'll either just A look at it through cameras they have mounted on their little you know entrance station or B they'll have someone come out with a measuring tape and actually measure your trailer and measure how high the trash is stacked in it and then they'll come up with like a, a cubic yards yeah a cubic yardage so that's the way most of them charge um, so they'll measure the foot and convert it to cubic yards so for instance uh, the trailers I usually use are 16 cubic yards and they're uh, 16 foot long by six and a half foot wood six and a half foot wide by four foot tall and then uh, they might charge me ten dollars per cubic yard you know anywhere between eight point five dollars per cubic yards and ten dollars per cubic yard and so I might pay uh, hundred sixty dollars to dump that one trailer at the type four construction waste type landfill uh, but actually in my experience you know they'll usually charge you a little bit less especially if you're friendly with the people gate at the gate and you know them and you come there often you know I'll usually end up dumping that one for like a uh, hundred dollars rather than a hundred sixty dollars so uh, a lot of times you can either pay cash or credit but some particular landfills I go to will only accept cash it just depends so you, you pull up to the gate they tell you what price it is and then you give them the money you leave the gate and then uh, you'll probably end up driving down a dirt road a ways they have signs kind of directing you to different parts of the landfill so you just gotta pay attention and usually there's just one place you're going to it's uh, just gonna be a big pile of trash and junk and it should be pretty obvious um, and you just you drive up to the the heap and a lot of times there's gonna be you know four or five other trucks and trailers there and then also off to the side there's going to be kind of a separate area for big dump trucks you know the bigger commercial vehicles they kind of, they kind of keep them separated from the smaller guys with their trucks and trailers that are doing hand unloads because uh, their big dump beds leave a lot of room for uh, waste to kind of spill out and uh, maybe fall on you if you park too close I guess that's one reason I'm sure they have other reasons too um, so you so you back your trailer up to this pile watch out for nails and, and boards when you're backing up if you got somebody with you have them spot you just to make sure you're not running anything over that's gonna damage your tires because you the more you go to the landfill the more you can get nails in your tires and possibly boards and other things interfering with your tires and axles it's kind of a pain so just be careful so you pull up to it pull up to the pile back up to it and uh, just let your gate down on your trailer and just throw everything out into that pile and uh, you know sometimes you'll have to turn your truck back on and scoot forward a little bit just so you can keep dumping everything out to 
depending on if you've got a gate or if it just drops off the back of your trailer. Um, and then once you're done, you just uh, you just pull out and and uh, exit the landfill and you're done. Um, some other details that are kind of important to consider whenever you're going to landfill and dumping stuff is uh, there's one main pile that most people will be dumping stuff, but if you have like a bunch of concrete or bricks, uh, there might be a different pile at the same landfill that they'll want you to dump that. But if you're just starting off, you're probably not going to have a whole big uh, load of concrete or bricks that will make them want you to go to the different pile. It's, it's a lot of weight. It's really the kind of stuff you need to dump truck for. If you don't have a big pile of bricks or concrete, they're not going to make you go to that different pile, and it's not a big deal. Um, also, a lot of the landfills that are construction type landfills will have a different area for green waste so if you have a bunch of branches and leaves and that sort of thing you might back up to a different pile but it it'll be pretty obvious that they usually have signs directing you and you'll just see it because it'll be a big pile of crap of your you know choosing um, also whenever you go to the landfill and you're hand unloading things sometimes it takes a while so they ha offer a service usually that's called a pull-off and what you do for a pull-off is you stick a uh, pallet or a tire in the front of your trailer before you load the stuff and you attach a chain to it and uh, once you get to the landfill you can wrap that chain around a bulldozer the, the forks of the bulldozer that they are you know pushing all the trash around with and they'll just back the bulldozer up and it'll pull everything out of your trailer without you having to handle it, unload it, and it'll be a lot quicker, it's a lot more convenient, rather than if you've got a trailer full of boards and, and sheetrock and stuff like that, that's it's really a pain to hand unload all that. You'll see what I mean if you get involved with this. And, it, you know, it can save you 30 minutes and, and a lot of backache and make you able to get to your other jobs quicker if you got other things lined up. The drawback to pull-offs is you got to pay for them. So depending on the landfill, it'll be anywhere between like twenty and forty dollars to get that pull off. And uh, you know, if you can unload your own trailer in like thirty minutes, but you just paid thirty dollars for somebody else to you know do the pull off, well, you got to consider your hourly rate. You know, are you busy enough to pay for a, a basically a convenience fee, or should you just do it yourself? Um, I guess that's really all I have to say about the type 4 landfills um, now there's the other type of landfill where you can dump household trash and they're a little less strict like I said on what you can and can cannot dump so when you go to those you can you know dump your bleach bottle you can dump your food trash and you really don't have to worry about sorting through things as much now you still can't dump paint or oil or uh, you know solvents that could explode because they are running heavy machinery you should be careful with things like that um, and you can't dump refrigerants so you can't take a refrigerator to either types of landfills um, I guess I should talk about transfer stations now I guess uh, the landfills you probably get the picture by now um, in other areas besides where I live at and what's close to me uh, from what I read, a lot of landfills do charge based on weight. So that you might pay, you know, uh, fifty dollars per two thousand pounds, you know, to to dump stuff. So that takes your mind off volume and, and more towards weight restrictions. And so that's kind of a segue into uh, transfer stations. Um, not all trash is going to go to a landfill, uh, especially depending on where you're at. So, for instance. Uh, your municipal solid waste, I don't know if it's not solid, anyway, your minu municipal waste uh, that your normal trash trucks come and pick up from the front of your house, you know, your normal household trash, their weekly service, um, those trucks oftentimes won't drive all the way to the landfill. The landfill's far, those trucks get bad gas mileage, they have to find a better way to do things, so they go to a transfer station a lot of times and the transfer station is like a landfill you you go up to a, a way station and you pay at the gate and then 
you drive to like a warehouse the one near me is it's a big metal warehouse uh, you know probably like you know five or six hundred feet long by you know three hundred feet wide and it's probably like forty foot tall and uh, they just take these dump trailers I mean these uh, dump trucks and they, they back into it they dump their load and then a uh, you know a bulldozer will come and you know push their load into a, a big pile along with all the other people's stuff and then a crane type device takes the trash that they just dumped and they dump it onto these trucks these uh, big 18 wheeler trucks you know after they compress it and they put it on these trucks and then those big trucks that are more suited to driving longer distance and more fuel efficient and all that will take that to a landfill so that's in a nutshell what a transfer station is um, so the advantage of a transfer station a lot of times is they're closer to you so you'll spend less time driving and also you might get to dump based on weight and uh, if you've got a truckload of mattresses or household trash as opposed to construction waste like a bunch of boards mixed in with concrete and or you know uh, I don't know pick any construction waste it's heavy a lot of times you can oftentimes pay less to dump your load so for instance today I had a garage clean out there was actually a, everything in the house that you know they were cleaning out because it was a tenant eviction and uh, I filled up my 16 foot trailer which is a 16 yard trailer and um, took it down to the transfer station and it was like you know uh, some mattresses uh, some dressers uh, recliner and then some construction waste and some boxes of you know movies stuff like that I took it down to the transfer station because it was close by and I dumped it for fifty three dollars you know they weighed me in at about ninety six or 9,800 pounds and I dumped like 2,400 pounds so it was a little over a ton uh, so that they charge $44 for a first ton and then they prorate the charges after that for any you know weight after the first ton so anyway I paid like 53 bucks uh, if I would have gone to a different landfill not the transfer station I would have paid uh, anywhere from 100 to 160 um, I tend to avoid the the landfills that actually charge me the full price. Uh, it's it's stupid. I can find cheaper places. So basically, you know, rather than paying a hundred dollars, I paid fifty three dollars. So I saved myself self forty seven dollars, and I also didn't have to sort through all that waste because it was household waste. Um, so if you keep in mind your weight versus volume, you know, you might decide, well, maybe I'll just go to the um, you know construction landfill that's closer by but if I don't want to sort stuff maybe I'll go to this transfer station that's close by and you gotta note that uh, not all transfer stations are open to the public it took me a while just to find the one close to me in Houston because uh, I didn't know what I was doing to start off with and to realize that you know I could go to that one I called around to a few different places and they said oh we you know we don't we're not open to the public so I just gave up and assumed like none of these people were but some of them are so call around and figure it out um, so that's enough of landfills and transfer stations I think um, next place you, you're gonna dump a lot of stuff not really dump but really recycle is uh, the scrap yards and uh, it's important to note that all scrap yards in your area are probably not equal there's some that are going to be way better than others and I'm going to tell you a little bit about you know things you want to look for in a scrap yard obviously number one is the price you know what are they giving you per uh, you know pound of scrap steel you know they have different ways of putting it they'll say you know per hundred pounds or per ton or whatever but uh, for instance, right now, scrap steel prices are kind of low. It has something to do with sanctions on Russia and the price of oil and all that shit. But uh, right now, it's about five cents a pound. So you got a thousand pounds of scrap steel. You know, you got fifty bucks. If you got two thousand, you'll you'll get a hundred pounds. Um, now that's now in my area. I go to this one place called ABS Scrap Metal, and it's you know three miles up the road and. Uh, you know when scrap steel was higher they were giving me about 10 cents a pound now at the same time that they were giving me 10 cents a pound 
there were other places uh, further closer to downtown Houston that were offering like five cents a pound. I even had somebody give me like three and a half cents a pound while this other place was giving me ten cents a pound. So the point is, you need to call around and ask them, well, what are you paying for, you know, scrap steel per pound? And uh, if they start to, like, go into specifics of, well, is it, you know, short iron, long iron, blah, 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 or, oh, it really depends on the condition and blah, blah, blah. You know, I understand people want to make money. I'm not trying to knock them, but when they start hassling you about specifics and just can't give you a straight answer it might not be the best place again going back to my example I go to this one place because they don't give me BS answers they pay the highest prices and a lot of times it's doubled in what other people are paying I don't know how that works out in the economy where it's like that but it is um, also another thing you want to look at in a scrapyard is do they make you um, put everything in these little hoppers or this little space or do you have a, a scrap heap that you can back your trailer up to and just unload everything yourself and not waste time like fitting it in confined spaces and also for that matter is the scrap yard big um, do you have enough room to move your trailer around I've, I've been to quite a few scrap yards and uh, you know scrap metal places and it's like they have this tiny little you know facility where I can barely even fit my trailer in and it's even more difficult to get it back out and uh, you know the customer service sucks you know you have to like wait for the person in front of you to unload and then once you finally do unload it's like I said you gotta have you gotta put everything in these little hoppers or you gotta unload everything and they have to put it all on a scale and so you have to wait for them to lift everything onto the scale so if you have like a 400 pound uh, refrigerator or a few you know 100 pound desks it just takes forever and you know time is money don't deal with those places if you can t find a place that's big and has room to drive around and uh, you know back up to a pile and just throw all your crap off um, and uh, if you go to one of the better places they'll have a scale that just weighs your truck okay so in an ideal, you know, scrapping scrap metal situation, you'll uh, you pull up to a scale, kind of like at the landfill, and they'll weigh your truck. Then you'll go to the scrap pile, throw all your scrap steel off, not your copper and more valuable metals, but your scrap steel. And then you'll come back and you'll weigh again, and then you'll have all your weight for your scrap steel. And then. Um, Obviously, you've probably heard of you know separating metals because some are worth more than others. Uh, they, that's definitely something to consider. Um, I would recommend that you don't waste your time too much breaking stuff down. There's a lot of videos on YouTube about people like breaking out, breaking down TVs to get the copper out, or you know, uh, taking apart um, refrigerators and you know, cutting the compressor in half. <laughs> and things like that. Um, whether or not you want to get into all that, really breaking things down, or like breaking computers down too, it just depends on what you consider your time worth and you know how busy you are, and uh, whether or not you can do it in a like a production line kind of situation where you have a bunch of the same thing and you know how to break it down and you have all the tools to do it at the same time. In my experience, I don't think it's really worth to break a lot of this stuff down. If you've got access to a bunch of like copper piping or copper tubing on a, whatever you happen to be scrapping or uh, or you've got a bunch of aluminum that you can separate from something I don't really bother with it unless it kinda meets those criteria. Um, you'll spend so much time breaking things apart and cutting things off uh, that it, you're gonna be making like five or ten bucks an hour and if you're starting your own business, I, I don't think you should be make, making five or ten bucks an hour. You know, you want to try to make like forty or fifty an hour or more. Um, also, don't worry about cutting small thin wires out of like computers and things like that. Now, if you got thicker gauge wire, yeah, you can consider saving that and getting some real, you know, clippers and and uh, cutting off the plugs and all that. I'm not going to go too much 
into detail about that. I just would like to say, you know, be cognizant of the amount of time you're spending versus what kind of money you're actually getting back out. Um, all right, moving on from scrapyards, uh, you can donate a lot of stuff. Now you can take it to Goodwill or you know whatever resale shop happens to be in your area. You know, don't be a prick and donate stuff that's you know total crap. But you know, donate uh, you know uh, furniture, especially if it's uh, particle board, still in good condition. Um, because particle board doesn't resell as well as hardwood if you're trying to actually resell stuff, which is another thing you can do. Uh, let's say you've got a couch that's in okay condition, you know, kind of resellable condition, donate it. If you've got, you know, consumer electronics that aren't quite resellable but they're usable, or if you've got uh, a bunch of clothes that are in good condition and clean, or, you know, VHS movies or a bunch of DVDs and you don't feel like separating everything out and reselling it uh, dishware it all just depends on uh, on your load but a lot of times it's it's important to consider you can donate stuff because if you don't donate it or resell it well then you have to pay a dump fee but if you donate some some stuff you know you'll actually be helping people out just don't be a prick about it I've seen I've gone to customers houses where they say oh don't take that I'm gonna donate it or have it you know somebody come pick it up for donation and it's just uh, stuff that has rat crap all over it and wrote shit and people get ridiculous don't do that alright then uh, you can resell a lot of stuff um, my approach to reselling stuff is uh, either resell at a garage sale if it's like five dollars or more that you, you can get for it or if you can get like 50 bucks or more for it, you might consider just selling it on Craigslist. I resell a lot of stuff on Craigslist, um, but also eBay. Uh, if it's not worth at least a certain dollar amount, I wouldn't re recommend selling it on Craigslist or eBay or, or uh, Facebook, uh, Beg, Borrow, Steel groups because you spend so much time um, talking to people, uh, waiting for them to show up for, and then not showing up or you know calling you asking you if you'll take a lower price it, j it takes time to meet people basically in a nutshell and time to list stuff so don't bother selling stuff single items unless they're worth at least you know 40 50 bucks or, or more otherwise you know if you got a garage you can store things for a garage sale you can make a lot of money off of a garage sale you know little electronics and stereos and uh, you know hardwood furniture desks just trying to think of all the different things I've sold I've sold all kinds of things but you know rather than paying to dump stuff obviously if it's in decent condition you can get at least get something for it resell it and also uh, even if you can't donate something or resell it sometimes you can still just give it away for free on Craigslist uh, for instance I've had a lot of couches that you know weren't stinky but were in questionable condition you know a leather couch with a rip in it um, big screen TVs that you know people were having me take away a lot of times but people won't really rebuy them anymore but people will take them for free you know what I mean you can give away for free on Craigslist and so you know a couch or a big screen TV that you can give away for free is saving you you know a lot of cubic yardage, a lot of cubic yardage that you don't have to pay to dump for volume. Um, so, big items I would give away for free on Craigslist. Otherwise, uh, don't mess with it. It's not worth it, you know, even giving away for free because people will waste so much of your time. Um, going back to the scrapyards, I forgot to uh, mention one thing. When you go to the scrapyard, uh, if you have any uh, enclosed cylinders you know they want a hole punctured or uh, slit cutting them in half because they're worried about compressed cylinders you know exploding and they want to make sure nothing's left in them also if you have uh, anything with an engine like uh, lawn mowers or compressors or weed eaters you need to drain the oil and gas out of those before you take them to the scrapyard otherwise most scrapyards I go to won't take them 
because you know they're running equipment that can catch fire and also downstream processing of the scrap metal I'm sure there's an issue if you leave oil or any kind of you know petrochemicals in there also a lot of scrap yards will tell you if you take uh, refrigerators it has to be you know drained of uh, the coolant you know the refrigerant uh, before they'll take it um, especially if you call them on the phone and they you know want a certification and all this stuff uh, that's their effort to satisfy uh, you know environmental regulations and and local laws but in reality if you take a refrigerator to the scrapyard and just throw it off your trailer they're not going to stop you um, it's it's kind of hard for people to actually follow the laws the way that they are listed um, because it costs money to get their refrigerant drained and most people don't have the equipment to do it so the reality is it's not going to get done regardless of how you feel about it and uh, if you dump some of the stuff at the uh, scrapyard it's really up to them to take care of it because what they're going to go and do later is uh, they're probably going to cut off the compressor and cut off some of the, the copper tubing and stuff like that and that's on them I guess that's a little questionable I'm just saying how it is really um, alright and then uh, a lot of times when you go to customers houses you're going to end up having them ask you to take uh, paint and chemicals and oil and uh, who knows what else um, just tell them no tell them no you can't take paint you can't take chemicals especially you know hazardous chemicals and uh, they'll have to deal with it the reason I'm saying that is because um, a you're not supposed to take hazardous chemicals without a license and you can get in trouble for things like that not that I think that will actually happen to you anytime soon unless you flaunt the fact that you're doing it but B as a business it's a lot harder for you to get rid of you know a large quantity of these items as opposed to um, a resident a lot of times um, you know the, the county recycling centers and you know city recycling centers they'll offer recycling services for you know uh, paint and uh, oil um, antifreeze, um, lacquer, things of that nature, solvents, um, and you know either the resident can dispose of these things for free or they can pay like you know five dollars for a gallon of paint or you know two dollars for this you know jug of whatever. I'm not too familiar with the pricing in a lot of you know recycling centers in my area but as a business you can't go in there with like you know a half trailer load of, of paint and things like that and expect to pay dispose of it uh, they don't let you so just keep that in mind don't take the uh, the paint and chemicals from the customers because they can get rid of it but you can't and honestly what they're going to end up doing and I'm sure this is what happens they're not going to go take the time to go to pay and recycle it they're going to dump it in a trash bag and uh, hope that the, uh, the, you know, the weekly trash service will take it and they will because they can't see inside the trash bags and it just ends up at the landfill anyway uh, but at least it's not on your conscience you didn't take it and dispose of it improperly now uh, sometimes they'll sneak stuff in on you uh, if you get oil um, you can always take it to AutoZone so any kind of uh, uh, car oils like uh, transmission fluid uh, any kind of hydraulic oil trying to think oh yeah and power steering fluid you can put that all in a container and you know take it to AutoZone or your other you know auto parts shop and a lot of times they'll have a uh, container where you can dump it for free and they don't charge and they don't mind actually uh, I don't know if it's still this way depending on oil prices I guess but they actually get paid for that oil that you're dumping so it's kind of a win-win once you collect enough oil and uh, you know big enough container there's a service that comes and takes it and they give you you know so much for you know 50 guy at five gallons of oil or whatever um, let's see oh yeah another big topic is recycling you know obviously metal is easy to recycle people give you money for that but also you're gonna get a lot of cardboard and plastic um, the cardboard 
a lot of times at uh, schools around your area um, and churches as well, they'll have you know cardboard box recycling um, deal set up. So just uh, make sure you crush your cardboard and flatten your cardboard, and you know you can go to those areas you know when school's not in or at night and uh, get rid of all those moving boxes that somebody you know gave to you and also you know a lot of your uh, plastic I don't worry so much about recycling plastic it's kind of hard to separate um, from all the other stuff that's usually with it now if I get a, a bulk thing of plastic that's obvious I can take it out of a box or whatever and, and throw it in a recycling bin that's great but you know when it comes to recycling you got to consider that you know your time is important and you can't sit there and you know separate every little thing from each other you're in the business to make money and that doesn't really work and you're not really doing a whole lot of good if you do that anyway so when you go to recycle consider just uh, only going to the recycling bin if you have a, a bulk amount of uh, cardboard or plastic and, and a big situation that often occurs is just uh, if someone just moved they're gonna have a bunch of moving boxes left over sometimes they'll be full of stuff sometimes they won't if they're full of stuff just dump all the stuff out and then fold the cardboard and, and you know recycle the cardboard okay let's see that's another topic um, boards a lot of times uh, you're gonna get boards you're gonna get tons and tons and tons of boards that people are throwing away either from decking or fencing or you know two by fours from a construction project um, here's the deal with boards if you've got enough of them and they're in semi decent condition there's people off Craigslist that will want them and they'll take them for free especially if you offer to drop it off for free so if uh, somebody took out their uh, their fencing around their yard and installed new fencing and you get the old stuff uh, it's, uh, people consider it like reclaimed wood and they'll do all kinds of little projects with those old fence pickets you know as long as they're not like stupid rotten you know don't take them stuff that's crumbly uh, but you know take pictures put it on Craigslist and you know sometimes you can dump a whole trailer full of, of wood or boards for free uh, if they're nice enough you might be able to get money I'm always just giving them away for free though just because I'm saving time and get saving on dump fees and I can move on to the next job and make more money rather than you know sitting on stuff waiting for it to sell also deck boards you can do that a lot too you know like I said just don't do it when it's like really rotten but if it's you know semi okay you know deck boards people will use it for projects and reclaim wood and they're happy to take it so it goes along with the whole you know you can give stuff away for free on Craigslist that you can't necessarily sell sometimes let's see Oh yeah, and then uh, finally, this will be my last little you know subject to talk about on this video about dumping stuff is uh, there's uh, people that resell, th people that have resell shops where they'll uh, you know refinish old furniture or have little knickknacks you know like old china or paintings or uh, what else do they sell you know old signs. Uh, old industrial devices anything old but still kind of cool you know from like the 50s or 60s or whatever or something that looks rustic you know there's a lot of these resale shops that are around and they love the junk that you have in the back of your trailer a lot of times so rather than you know uh, paying dis to dispose of stuff even if it's broken a lot of times they'll take your old furniture um, you know when I first started doing junk removal which is like a year and a half ago I, you know, I happen to be living right behind the alley of uh, these furniture shops and like three of them were right behind me and uh, you know they started checking out the things that are in my back of my trailer and you know offering me money so um, you need to consider if you have hardwood furniture you know, no particle board and and no really rotten stuff but if you have hardwood you know tables hardwood desks um, yeah anything hardwood consider hardwood furniture I mean you know consider uh, getting in contact with some of these uh, furniture people 
you know, refinish your people and uh, offer to sell it to them for five, ten, twenty bucks, depending on exactly what it is. Sometimes you can get more, but uh, you know, have a place to store it because you're probably not. I mean, you're probably not going to have them live right behind these people. But if you've got a place to store some of this stuff, you know, maybe you can turn around and and resell it or refinish it yourself and sell it somewhere else for you know much higher dollar. You know, rather than dumping it. Also, uh, you know, they'll they'll take like uh, metal objects, like uh, you know, stuff you put in your garden, uh, especially you know, metal patio furniture. They're interested in things like that. And like I said, old knickknacks, uh, nice paintings. You never know. It. Uh, I can't think of all the different stuff I've sold to these people on the fly, but you know, consider these you know old rustic shop places. They'll probably refer to you as a picker. Um, like I said, anything you can see on the the picking, you know, the picker shows on the uh, you know cable, consider saving that stuff and reselling it because you can probably get some money. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's my uh, video on uh, dumping stuff. Uh, hopefully that helps you out in your business. Uh, please visit my website www.snapjunkremoval.com. Uh, if you want to, you know, help my search engine rankings, uh, share my videos, uh, write me a good review, you know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.